Hey, welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be taking my original Boron 0.1 that I built and filmed the build series on. The main focus of this is going to be upgrading to the BTT SKR Pico board. Now, the BTT SKR Pico is a very small board, as you can see here. One of the reasons that I'd like to upgrade to it is uh, mainly because Big Tree Tech had sent, sent it to me uh, to evaluate, and I wanted to do a video on just how to get it up and running. I know these smaller boards are becoming more and more popular nowadays, uh, mainly because of their size and profile. And I will compare it to the SKR E3 V2, which is what I currently have in this machine. So um, this pairs very really well with a Raspberry Pi Zero Two W is also. Um, but I'm going to probably just continue to use my uh, Raspberry Pi Three since that's already set up. I've taken my back panel off on on this uh, Boron Zero. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of wiring and mess in here. Back when I did this, there were really no, very few kits that were being sold. And a lot of it was self-sourced. This was a self-sourced kit by Snajo in the Discord. Um, and it's been a great kit. It's been really fantastic. One thing you'll notice, though, is I just got a, a lot of mess here, a lot of extra wires. So even if you're not upgrading like I am, it's still a good idea to label your wires, especially if you don't have like a kit where they, they've already pre-labeled them. You can see here I've got all of my... Wire's pretty much labeled now, and I went ahead and did a little bit of shortening as well. So I have went ahead and downloaded the Clipper-USB UF2 file, which is pre-compiled firmware from Big Tree Tech. I went ahead and did this because I think it's going to be a lot easier to have a copy of Clipper, even if it may be an older version, on the board, um, rather than try to connect it up to my computer directly after I have it all installed. Doing the copy initially, you are going to need to, if you're copying the file like I'm going to do, um, directly, you're going to need to jumper both USB power and boot. Now subsequently, when you need to update the firmware, you're going to need to just jumper these boot pins, assuming that you're going to have your Pi connected to your um, your Big Tree Tech Pi Co. All right, now you can see I've got these jumpers installed in their appropriate places. And you're only, again, you're only going to need the, need these installed for the first time you copy the file from your PC. And then you're going to need to jumper this again anytime you want to enter DFU mode or device firmware update mode plug that board in you should see an rpi-rp2 so i'm showing this on a mac but um you should have something similar on a pc all i'm going to do is just copy it over to that file or that folder and once it does that it'll disconnect temporarily and then it should come back and uh you're gonna basically see this come back up and you should be good okay now that i've got an image on the btt a clipper image on the btt board i'm going to go ahead and mount it to this little Raspberry Pi board here. So you can just use the same Raspberry Pi mounting board that you use for your Pi. Um, and then all you're going to need to do is print that out, which I've done. And then you're going to use a couple of uh, smaller screws. And then we're going to put some tape on the back and then stick it in a nice place here where I'm happy with. And I'm going to be using some M24s. Those seem to be fine. You could probably use M26s as well. I went ahead and labeled everything. I removed the um, SKR E3 V2, and now I've got this mounted, the Pico mounted here. So um, there are just a few slight changes that you're going to have to make if you're doing an upgrade from the SKR E3 V2 or V3 to the S the BTT Pico. Um, the main change that you're going to have to do is convert your two pin end stops to three pin. So I've got, for example, I've got this X end stop on the E3 V2, and you can see how I just switch the X end stop. I just use a pair of tweezers like this, and then I hold down the little pin, and then I just push it, and that, that works pretty well to get them out. I started wiring, and I've got my hot end connections. These don't matter on the polarity. However, the power end does, so make sure you, as you go, as you're wiring things up, that you're double checking polarity, and you can do that just by looking at the bottom side of the board, so you can see there plus and minus. I've got a couple special connectors that I want to point out. This can be a little confusing if you're not used to how it's wired. So we're going to run the part fan next, and this one is going to pull the 5 volt off of this 5 pin connector here. And I've already wired that up. This is actually the same as how I had it set up on the e E3V2. And then the other connector you're going to use is going to be this fan 2 here um, to the negative, just the negative pin. The reason I do that, these are these are 24 volt fan ports, and if you plug your 5 volt fan into a 24 volt fan 
port, you're going to have a bad time. So you need the positive to your fan on this pin, either one of these. These are both 5 volt. And then you want your negative over here. The negative is what actually allows you to do the, the logic on it. To, to control the PWM. And while I'm doing the wiring, I'm just referencing the Voron Design uh, SKR Pico wiring. I've got the E motor, X, Y, and Z motor all plugged in now. And I think um, at this point, it's gonna be hard to connect the rest of it without mounting it, so we'll go ahead and do that. Something that I'm using that's a little bit different too, I'm gonna use this port here right next to the USB. And I'm going to use this. I'm running an AC bed, so I'm going to be using the ground and one of the IO pins, IO 20. So, this is going to be different probably than your setup. If you are running a normal DC bed, you're going to be using these, uh, these two pins here for the heater. And I just went ahead and plugged in the USB C cord. Now, you can see my wiring's still pretty messy. Um, that's okay. I'm going to come back probably and tidy it up just a little bit, but I want to kind of get everything tested before I do all the zip ties and maybe a shorten a few more wires. And I went ahead and powered everything up and uh, did not see any smoke, <laughs> so that's always a good sign. Um, I don't have my expander or my V0 display plugged in yet because I really want to get this uh, set up first. For a starting point for a printer configuration, make sure you go to the Voron Design site. I'm going to be starting with this and um, probably copying over some of my old settings. First thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and connect. And by default, you're gonna use the Pi user with password Raspberry. So I've went ahead and SSH'd in. I'm just gonna type in this ls slash dev slash serial slash by ID. And then if you did it right, you should have a device with RP2040 in there. So remember I copied that pre-compiled firmware, which is good. So now I can, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm going to use it um, in the printer.cfg that I'm building. I'm on the Voron site and I'm going to go ahead and download the SKR Pico file. And once I download that, um, I'm going to upload it uh, to the Voron um, printer. Okay, so here I am. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click upload file and I'll just take that one that I downloaded and now it says it's successfully uploaded it. So now um, the other thing that I'm going to need to do is rename it and I just want to call it printer.cfg. And then once I do that, I go in here and I'm going to paste in the value of what I did with that ls command right here. So I've got that on my clipboard now and I'm just going to come over here, highlight this, and then right click paste. So now that should work. And I'm going to go ahead, I can save it and restart, but there's a few other changes I want to make first. And next up, I'm just checking fans and hot ends and heated bed, and then I'm going to check the end stop. So I'm just going through the menu and making sure that everything is working as expected. And so far it is, so far so good. Check the fan, I basically went in here and just set it to 200, kind of watching it climb, watching this, and I was making sure that uh, the hot end fan was also on, which it was. I'm running a heated bed check. You can see that uh, the light's blinking. SSR is working just fine. The bed's starting to warm. Um, since it is an AC bed, I set it to 60% power. You can see here that I've got the uh, temperatures reading just fine. Um, curves are okay, but one of the things that you're going to want to do is run a PID tune. And there's a good chance that if you were using a different board with different PID tune settings, or PID settings, you're most likely going to need to run it again. Now something I find helpful is adding some of the startup macros here, and I went ahead and did that. I have this out in my um, GitHub, just look at the video description for a link. But these are part of the initial startup checks that are documented on the Voron start page. So this will just help you diagnose if your X, Y, and Z um, motors are all going in the right direction. And then um, you can also query your end stops to make sure that they're triggered as you would expect. So if you want to use the startup macros like I showed to kind of help test and configure things, one of the easy ones to do is just the query in stops. So Y open, or X open, Y triggered, Z open. So my Y is all the way back, as you can see here. And um, so that's a good thing. So I've kind of moved things up a little bit, so neither in stop is triggered. So if I hit the in stops, they all should be open. So if I, um, if I come over here and I want to test it, I can also just manually 
kind of feel the end stop and press it and then trigger hit that button again so when i hit it again when it's um triggered which i did there now it'll say y x is triggered and and same thing goes for the the y as well so you want to make sure that all of your end stops are functioning before you try to home something that you're ultimately going to need to do is be able to update clipper and build the firmware image so i'm going to go ahead and walk through how to do that using the big tree tech um, documentation it's really pretty, pretty easy we're we're first going to go ahead and ssh in to the uh, the the pi itself so i'm going to go ahead and do that and i'm doing this from a mac as you can probably tell so once you're in once you've uh, connected you're going to go ahead and go to the clipper directory I went ahead and change directories to that so you're going to need to type in make menu config and this is going to bring up the um the options that you're going to need to use or the screen to set it so um you're going to need to change this to raspberry pi 2040. i'm communicating over usb if you decide to use uart you would want to change that here it's pretty much everything that you're going to need so at this point you can go ahead and hit escape and hit yes to save the configuration and after that you're going to go ahead and type in make and that should Go ahead and create your Clipper UF2 image. It'll take a little bit of time. And you can see that there was a clipper.uf2 file created, so I can go ahead and access that file by going to the out directory and listing it. You'll see it there. So at this point, um, you can. there's a couple different ways that you can um, apply that to your, your board. The way that you can do this um, is with make flash, but I was running into some problems. I'm still kind of working through that. But basically you're going to run a command make flash, flash device, and then you're gonna pass in your ID of your Raspberry Pi board. And then basically when you do that, uh, this is the one that was successful. It's gonna go through here, enter the bootloader. It's going to upload or copy over the UF2 file. And it looks like it was successful, but after I ran that, I'm getting this boot cell mode, no boot cell mode was found. So I think um, it's just, there's something with the script that's not quite working right. So I'm gonna look into that. So that's probably the easiest way, um, you know, and, and maybe by the time that you run make flash, it'll be fine and you won't have to restart the machine. Your other option of course, is to do it as it's written on the documentation. So according to the documentation, um, they don't even mention make flash in here, which is fine but you're basically going to need to read this and then they want you to copy it over manually once makes completed. So you're gonna copy the clipper.uf2 file um, from the Pi. You're gonna use a tool like um, WinCSP or PSCP. So that's gonna allow you to copy it from the Raspberry Pi device to your local computer. And then you're gonna to have to plug that board into your local computer and then um, paste it. So that, that's a lot of work in my opinion. So I prefer the make flash method. If you're a Windows user and you wanna download your out file, then you can connect to the Raspberry Pi using WinSCP and you're gonna to browse to Clipper out and then you're going to go ahead and grab the clipper.uf2 file like I've shown here. Once you download that, um, you can go ahead and connect your computer like I did earlier uh, to the board and you can copy that to the uh, the drive. It's a very simple process. In summary, I'd just like to talk a little bit about my thoughts on should you upgrade to this board? Should you install this board? I think if you're doing a new build and you haven't bought a board yet, uh, the Pico is the way to go for sure. It's a smaller footprint and that's really what matters on a Boron Zero. All other things considered, it's pretty much a very similar board to the previous option with the SKR E3 V2 or V3 Mini. So those boards are great. They were originally designed for Ender 3's uh, drop and replacements on the Creality machines. Um, the Pico reduces some features like it removes the video uh, connector and it removes the SD card and it just kind of shrinks everything down a little bit. The Raspberry Pi chipset's nice. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong, wrong with the STM32 chipsets either. So I don't know that there's much to talk about there. But overall, um, you know, the design of it, there are a couple different flavors of this. There's a fully armored one and uh, one with the, the one that I showed in the video 
was uh, the one with just the uh, heat sinks on it. I think that one's fine. The armored one is just more for looks. Um, if you're like me, you're, you're going to have a, a solid cover on the back and never see it anyway, so that really doesn't matter. Overall, it's a great board. I'm very glad that uh, Big Tree Tech provided it to me. I thank them for that and for sponsoring this video. You really can't go wrong with any of the BTT boards, either the Mini or the, the Pico. Thanks again for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those. Thanks.